Good morning. It is Saturday, day six of our trip. And it is about 8 a.m. I guess it's 8.30 by now. We're going to go ahead down to breakfast. And when I say we, that's going to be just this little Ollie here and Eva. The rest of the kids are still sleeping because after getting back so late from the laundry last night at around midnight, they're sleeping in. So here I got the laundry for the boys and the girls all clean. Now, one thing I noticed here, I think is funny, is that double beds in Germany, they come with two separate duvets. So everybody gets their own duvet. Um, and I think that's really cool. That way there's no fighting over the duvets at night. And then another thing I like is that here, in a baby crib, you are quote unquote allowed bedding. So both this hotel and the last one had really cute little, um, they have special baby pillows. They're like small and thin and the little crib size duvets. So um, again, nobody's worried about everybody killing themselves accidentally. And yeah, we got the laundry done. There's already, that's the dirty laundry down there piling up already. Now for today, the plan was originally to go to Strasbourg, which is just across the border into France. But I'm not sure that we're going to do that. I think we're going to stay local because it is so beautiful here. You can see a tractor going up the hill there. Two tractors. What you cannot see on video is how wonderful it smells here. The air is simply incredible. Well, of course, the breakfast is fabulous. Ollie got his little high chair here. But look at this view from our breakfast terrace. For breakfast, they offer eggs. And in Germany, that usually means a soft boiled egg. And they spoil them just fresh for us right now. A quick video of the breakfast bar. It's all these homemade jams. And the Moving over of the yogurt. I don't know what it is, but the yogurt here in Germany tastes so much better. Fresh fruit salad, and cream cheese, and butter. Here are the juices and honey and Nutella, and then three different kinds of water. And then just look here. How cool is that? More butter, mozzarella, all these vegetables, fresh radishes and cucumbers and tomatoes, bell peppers, liverwurst. We have over here the cheese and the meats, the bread that you slice yourself, and also the rolls. I need to get one of these. I sliced my bread this morning and I realized this is a cutting board and has a tray underneath that catches the crumbs. You can see that I need to get one like that. I have to ask them where to find that or what's that called. And then over here for the after is the cheese platter with a cheese knife. And that's the breakfast. Now the breakfast room itself, of course, is beautiful. I can film now that nobody's here. And we are out here through the door so that we're not bothering any guests. I'm always very self-conscious about my kids being kids, of course, but also not wanting to run other people's breakfast with their inevitable running and messes and yep, climbing on the table like he's doing. And then check out our view. <laughs> this is the main entrance of the hotel. And they have like big holiday and expresses here. And I don't know why anybody would stay at that when you can stay here. And I'm just going to walk in the way we would go to our room. So we go past to the front desk and everything is just so beautiful and so perfect. And there's a back way to go through where we don't have to go through the dining room. But I wanted to show the dining room because it is just so amazing. Doesn't that just look so perfect? So they offer, this is a restaurant. You can have dinner here in the restaurant. But our rooms are through the back here, past the restaurant. And there's also a separate entrance, but I wanted to show you, this is our actual entrance. If you want to come in the back and then up the stairs is our room. Okay, it's 10.30 a.m. on Saturday morning and I need a shower. The kids are all up. But the helpers are all sleeping. That's the big girls. So I'm going to bribe the kids with a rare treat, which is watching a movie. So they're going to watch that while we get all the clean laundry put away. 
and get ourselves ready for the day. In an update to the laundry solution, I want to say that these laundry bags have worked out really well. Before we left, I sharpened everybody's name on their bag. This is Stephen. And then I put their clothes in here, and I have this for all the little kids. So not the three big girls, but the six little kids each have their own laundry bag. And it makes it so easy when you get to these places. And right now, when I just finished the clean laundry, I laid it flat, and then I put it back in their bags. And this has just made it really easy for them to dress themselves in the morning. And then the dirty laundry, we just keep putting in trash bags until I get back to a laundromat. And I brought these, my safety pins that I use at home, to pin socks, dirty socks. And there's hardly any in here right now because all the socks are pinned. They're clean now, but we haven't unpinned them yet. And I love this system. I just pin a pair of socks together and that way they do not get separated. I have a separate video about that somewhere on my channel. And I've been doing that for probably, I don't know, eight or 10 years now in this best sock system. It's funny because the German nature comes through in every facet of little things, such as the shower fixture. There's two fascinating things here. Well, for one, imagine living in a country where everything is designed by German engineers. Imagine everything being designed by Mercedes or BMW. That's kind of what it's like. Even the shower fixtures are like really smart, the way they function. Instead of having one handle that controls the temperature and the water flow, which is kind of annoying, on the right here you control the temperature, and on the left you control the volume of water, and it comes out like a fire hose if you turn it fully open. And then up here, you can change it to where this can go up and down for kids or, you know, tall people. And you can even switch it to this rain head overhead. But what I think is funny is that on the temperature dial, no more it tells you the temperature. And this is kind of like the recommended setting, which is 40 degrees Celsius, which is a hot bath. This is like maybe 104 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just one of a thousand things where the, just the... The German nature comes through loud and clear, and it's really enjoyable. Now, what you won't find in these hotel bathrooms frequently are bathtubs. Both of them have only had showers, which is a little bit more difficult with kids, but it's pretty typical for Germany. Ollie is napping. The rooms are all ready and tidy. The kids are still watching quietly, and I am going to go out to the balcony and edit the video of day five that I didn't do at midnight last night. So I can upload that and then we will head out for the day. Our plans actually changed a little bit to include some more exciting things. So stay tuned and look at this view I am enjoying while editing the video. We are on our way to a, it's called a Zomarorobahn, which is kind of like a toboggan run. And along the way, we are stopping in this little town, village really. And there's a little bakery here behind me. They're closing at 12.30, but we just got it right as they were closing. We were able to buy some things. And also here, they have little fruits and vegetables by the roadside from the local ranch that you can buy. Check out these strawberries. And they have strawberry growing fields all over here that you can pick your own. We're going to buy them ready right now. But look how beautiful these are. Can we get some more? This is the little um, farm here, and they sell this wonderful produce they grow themselves. You cannot imagine how wonderful it smells in here. And another funny thing is that eggs are sold unrefrigerated here. And you can fill your own carton. And also the egg cartons hold 10, not 12, or 6 if they are on a full carton. And look how wonderful this is. And then across the street, there's this tiny little dwarf laden, which is called the village shop. And that's pretty much the extent of it. And the little villages have these stores. We just finished driving up the most scary but beautiful mountain road through the Black Forest. And we are up here at the Meleskopf. I think is the name of this mountain and this is what we're doing today. This is a toboggan run that goes down the hillside and there's some other fun things to do here. And we are pretty much at the top of this entire area. 
super scary drive, but so beautiful. Hi, sweetie! Eva, Eva, Eva! Oh, here comes excitement! Here comes trouble! Here comes trouble! You just have to appreciate the wildflowers that grow everywhere here. You're gonna go so fast on those drops. Oh, yeah, All right, Chloe and I are ready to go up. That's Becca in front of us going up first. Chloe, no, this is boring. But I get so fun when she eats this up. There's this tiny, there's, it's like, um, this is like that ride, the ride that we rode yesterday. It's like that ride, except the turns, so, except the sideways. A way farther approach. Plus, it's not that sideways. So it's only like tiny, tiny tilted, but but it's really fun. Hey, what's been your favorite part about today? Riding down on full speed. Riding at first, I thought we were really scared, but I actually much go faster when we were at full speed. Well, you're an adventurous girl. I knew you would love it. What's been your favorite part about the trip? Or can you pick just one? It's easy. Yeah. It's okay, you can look back. I have a favorite trip. I really like this, but I also like a loop of park. Those are my two favorite parts of the trip. Just like I don't have a favorite color, like, but I do have two favorite colors, purple and blue. This is going to be so fun, Mama. I'm going to go full speed up. Says to stop at the very end, at like the end. It's getting scary. You call this scary? <laughs> I call this scary. How is this scary? I don't know. As much as this is scary, Chloe. You didn't tell me it was gonna get scary. I just told you that it's a secret up there. I guess then you have to keep it forward. top of a mountain in the Black Forest and this lake is up here and a lot of touristy little stalls on the other side here that sell a lot of Black Forest tourist gifts really nice stuff actually
part of our group is out here on the lake right now on a paddle boat. It's not a very large lake. In fact, you can see the back there and you can walk all the way around it. But what I wanted to show you here is there's a really cool marble run and it's a natural marble run. All right, Stephen and Peter, go run your marbles down and let's see which ones go through. Stephen, there's the marble. Stephen. <laughs> and it runs down here. Go, Peter. And look, it's like a natural marble run. Peter, go give a shove. So it probably doesn't get much better than eating black forest cake in the actual black forest. We also have pretzels and some meat sticks and sandwiches. The food here is so cheap. These sandwiches were $3 each and they have black forest ham on them. And the cakes are fresh and look so delicious. So we're gonna dig in right now. This will be our dinner. Well, the day is coming to an end. We had a beautiful day in the Black Forest. And on our way down this really tall Mama, mountain where we found all the fun things today, there. by the side of the road, we found Mama. this water mill. Well, this is quite a sight to see in real life. It says here that this mill was built in 1789. This one was in use until 1930 as a grain mill and it has been restored mm -hmm. twice and it is actually fully functional it says this is amazing you can see all the moss and the fern growing here from the moisture this is the tiny little brook that is powering this big wheel. And you can see it coming off of there and continuing. That's the brook running through this little village. We found another little roadside stand and in spite of the fact that it's almost 9 p.m. it is still very light outside. And these people advertise that they have fresh homegrown raspberries and strawberries. Now we've already bought two kilos of strawberries today, but yet here we are buying more strawberries because they are just so good. And we'll get some raspberries too. And then the money's just gonna go in that little box. Another popular crop in this area is apples, as well as asparagus, but apparently that's all gone now.